Hello and welcome. I welcome you today not to the banks of the St. John River, not to one of our four churches in the two parishes of Andover and Denmark, but to my workshop in the backyard. This is a place of solitude. This is where I come to work on things that are particularly important to me. This is where I come to turn wood into sawdust or tune up the lawnmower. This is the place where I can be alone with my thoughts, speak to God, look at pictures on my walls and think about my friends and family that are no longer with us. This has been a good spot for me to think through what has been taking place over the last few weeks. Our provincial death count rises from COVID. The number of people who are being diagnosed as carrying the virus or being sick with the virus is steadily increasing. But on a positive note, as of today, the number of people in hospital in intensive care is down. For the first time in two weeks, the number of people being diagnosed with COVID is down. As much as we cursed this circuit breaker when it was first introduced, it ends up that it has been a wonderful thing for all of us. Although hard to admit that, it has been good for all of us. It has kept us safe. It has kept us to ourselves, but healthy. And that's why today I, I pray that you are all safe and healthy and happy and warm. And more importantly, on this lovely rainy day that the weatherman has brought us, dry. That's one thing I like about the workshop is when it rains hard, even though the ceiling is insulated, I can still hear it beat off the tin roof and I find that very relaxing. In today's readings and homily, we find, we find subjects which are very close to all of us, whether we realize it or not. And, and it's been a, been a very enjoyable week to think about what the readings are saying to us and, and to, to put my thoughts on paper. I've enjoyed it very much. It's given me an opportunity to reminisce and, and think about my youth, think about when I was surrounded by those who loved me. So with that being said, we'll begin with the reading of the Collect that's appointed for this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out for what is before, we may run the way of the commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading appointed this week is a reading from the book of Job. Then God answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched out the line upon it? On what were the bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstones when the morning stars sang together? 
and all of the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that the flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightning so that they may go and say to you, Here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts and given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to, cloud, to the number of the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens? When the dust runs into mass and, the clo and clogs cling together, can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about the lack of food? This is the word of God. That's a wonderful reading. It, it speaks to us through the, through the eyes of God himself. And, and, and basically he's asking, when I built the world, where were you? When I laid the foundations, where were you? It says we pray each week, all that is in the heavens and the earth is thine, all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. We pray that because everything is a creation of the Almighty's. It's not for us as humans, it's not for us as parts of his creation to question how or why things happen, but to accept them and carry on with our lives as he intended. As we move forward, we pres I present to you the psalm appointed for today, this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. It's Psalm 104, verses 1 through 9, 25, and 37. This psalm has a, f a refrain that, if you like, you can say it along with me. The refrain is, Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You wrap yourself in lights as with a cloak and spread out the heavens like a curtain. The refrain. Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and the flames of fire your servants. You have set the earth upon its foundations so that it, is ne so that it never shall move at any time. You covered it with the deep as with the mantle. The waters stood higher than the mountains. The refrain, Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up into the hills and down into the valleys beneath to the places you had appointed them. You set the limits that they should not pass. They shall not again cover the earth. And together the refrain. Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creation. Hallelujah. And the final refrain. Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second reading appointed for this Sunday is a reading from the letter of the Hebrews, to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen among them were mortals. They're put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to other gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness, and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but to take it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was anointed by the one who said to him, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through his own suffering. And having been per made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. My apologies for that. It's a combination of my lack of preparation and pronunciation of Hebrew scripture. The gospel for today and the holy gospel according to Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Um, is brought to us in the te from the tenth chapter, the th starting at the thirty first, thirty fifth verse. Sorry. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, "Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you." And he said to them, "What is it that you want me to do for you?" And they said to him, "Grant us to sit." one on your left hand and one on your right in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. You are able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism, and with the baptism which I was baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. And so Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that among the, Galilee, the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their ruler lords over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man could not be served, but to serve, came not to serve, but to serve and give him his life and ransom for many. 
This is the gospel of Christ. This, this gospel, however poorly I, I read it, um, is what I've reflected on all week. It has, in my mind, great meaning. And uh, there are scholars and academics who for years have fought with themselves to dig deeper into the allegory of the Gospels, of the Scriptures. Everything has a second meaning. Some are simpler than others, but everything has a meaning, an inner meaning. For us, We are left to understand what these meanings are to deeper thinkers, to those who spend their lives, devote their lives to discovering what the word really means. As common people, it's best for us to rely on our faith, to rely on our hearts. Let the Gospels speak to us rather than digging into them. Or at least, that's how I take it. It's easier for me to read a scripture two, three, maybe four times and just let it speak to me. Not dig too deeply into what I think it may or may not mean. But just appreciate it for what it is. It's the interpretation of God's Word through His divine inspiration to those people in history, in the Bible, who He communicated with one way or another as it was written down over generations so that we have it now. Let us pray. Lord in heaven, as we ask that you bless us as we gather together virtually in your name, we pray for your presence. We pray that we may find the strength to share your love, to show your compassion, to preach your word as it was given to us through the Gospels and through the Scriptures. Lord, we pray that by your grace we may be worthy children of your creation. We pray, Lord, that we each turn out the way you had intended us to be. Lord, we pray that we can walk in the footsteps of Jesus as he shared the word, as he healed the broken, as he touched each and every soul he spoke to or met. We ask, Lord, that this path may guide us safely to that house not made with, home, not made with hands, your eternal kingdom, so that we may be with you in your presence. Amen. We spend most of our lives working to maintain ourselves and our families. Some of us are even fortunate enough to establish a small nest egg, maybe even own our own homes own our own vehicles. It's all in an effort to retire or grow old comfortably. It's something that happens or starts the first day we begin to work full time and ends when we stop. More often than not, 
we find that we need hobbies to help us relax. We need interests and activities to help us get away from our daily grind. In some cases, these hobbies or attractions or, or interests become filled with our own passion. We even get to the point, or some of us get to the point, where more effort is put into our hobbies than we put into our eight to five vocations. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, especially if we use it as a distraction. And, and I don't mean a distraction in a bad way. I mean, it gives us the ability to, to remove ourselves from the stresses and strains of the week. Almost an escape. It doesn't matter if you quilt or knit or hunt or fish or turn wood into sawdust or work on the lawnmower. This is a release, a hobby or a distraction or an interest. It's something for you to occupy yourself. Maybe even to carry you through and keep you busy after a happy, healthy retirement. I personally have a passion for shiny tools. Uh, and, and trust me, I'm not going to pick up the camera and pan around my workshop um, because that just wouldn't be good. But most of my passion for, ch for shiny tools, and it doesn't matter whether they're for woodworking or, or doing mechanical work, I just love tools. And it seems to me that for over the last 50 years, since I was given my first carpenter set, around the age of four or five years old, that I was fortunate enough to be blessed with a father who was both skilled and patient. I was fortunate enough to be taught the value of developing skills and then working to purchase the tools to help me practice them. The jewels of my workshop, oddly enough, and I call them jewels because to me they are, the jewels of my workshop aren't some shiny new tool that I have bought at a woodworking store or, or at a, a UAP store. They're a set of pipe wrenches that were first purchased by my grandmother's grandfather. These tools were earned by him through hard work. He, William Cornfield, was a carpenter. He was an Irish immigrant who landed in St. John, New Brunswick in 1876. He came with few tools and belongings and his new bride, Margaret, with the intention of starting a new life, starting their family, making a living and growing old together. Margaret would start the family bakery on the Madawaganish Road in St. John, while William built the houses that surrounded them. Together they worked to make an earthly existence. They raised their family and kept them faithful in the church. 
everything they did, they did in the name of God. They worked hard in the name of God. They prayed hard in the name of God. They raised their family in the name of God. As each generation of my family have passed these wrenches down, father to son, for five generations, each of them has sustained their own family through work, striving and being guided forward by the word of God and their faith. And I find now at 55 years old that these wrenches fit my hand as if they were made for me. And yet, they weren't. The wrenches aren't smooth and shiny. They were foundered in sand casts, so they're, or at least were rough, but over time and use they've been smoothed. They have bolted hardwood handles carved on them. They're nothing special. They have no value, only sentimental value. And yet when I pick them up, never to use them, just to admire them and reminisce of the people who are no longer with me, they fit my hand perfectly. The hardwood seems to mold and melt into my hands as I grip them. And my fingers fit perfectly around the long handles. These generations that came before me may have played their part in who they were, but they have definitely played the part in who I am. Pieces of each one of the generations that have come before me have created Harold Boomer as if I'm some kind of Frankenstein. Oh, you have your mother's eyes. You have your grandfather's nose and ears. You have your uncle's smile. Each bit and piece of my five foot ten frame and probably the thoughts and attitude in my mind all belong to someone who came before me. And so, although I can say that my hobbies have turned me into a passionate woodworker or a passionate mechanic, it seems as if the tools I use weren't made for me but the generations that have come before me have made me for the tools I have, the gifts I have, the passions I have. Working hard, earning for what I want, and living in God's name. In today's Gospel, Mark tells us a story of James and John. He tells us about their sense of entitlement or, or how they wanted to be treated by God in the afterlife, to sit one on his right hand, one on his left. As, as they traveled together, Jesus became close to the apostles and they became very close to him. They reached a point where they all wanted to spend eternity with him. Every waking hour. And yet, as Jesus so boldly pointed out, theirs was not a life of relaxation and supervision. It was a life of servitude 
and faith. They had to work for what they wanted. They had to work for God. Everything that is in the heavens and the earth is His. All things come from Him. And of our own, we must give to Him. They certainly possessed all the tools they needed. Jesus told them that. They could be baptized in the same manner that He was in. They could preach the gospel in the same manner that He had. They could drink from the same cup that He had. And yet that wasn't their lot. That wasn't what they were intended to do. They were intended to live a life of servitude. Taking care of those less fortunate. Healing the sick. Spreading the word. Living a life guided by our Heavenly Father. This is a great reminder for each of us. We can have all the tools in the world and never be known as a builder. We can have all the fabric and needles and never be known as a quilter. We can have all the lures and rods available and still never be known as a fisherman. It's not enough to have the tools. We need the passion to do the work. We need the passion to get dirty. We need the passion to live a life of servitude, spreading the word of God, going out of our way, walking towards those in need rather than turning our back on them. Comforting each, comforting each other, loving each other, sharing God's love. Having faith in our efforts and exercising our abilities will be rewarded. But not sitting on God's right hand. Living with Him in His kingdom in eternal life. That will be our reward. After a life well spent working for what we deserve. Not feeling that we deserve what we haven't worked for. We're all products of those who came before us. Those who worked not only for themselves, but for what we have now. Creation is one of our great, greatest inheritances. Not simply to be received, but to be earned. Our faith in the love of God fit our lives like the handle of an old wrench. Not because it was fashioned for us, but because over time we were fashioned for it. Work, love, hope. Have passion. Have faith. Expect nothing. And receive everything. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your gifts of love, compassion, and faith. We trust that through you and your grace we may find salvation and eternal life. We pray that by our work and passion and the skills that we accumulate, we may please you. Give us the strength, Lord, to see beyond the hurt, beyond the pain. Give us the strength to help those who live around us. Give us the strength to live a life of servitude, Lord, as the stewards of your creation 
and of your church. Out of your love, let new life spring forth again and again. Thank you, Lord, for all you give us. Thank you, Lord, for all we have earned. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that make our lives what they are. We ask this all in your name, and in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I wish you all well. I pray each day that in the days to come and the weeks to come, you will remain safe, healthy, happy, warm. I pray that as winter comes closer, that you may all be sustained through your hope and through your faith of better days ahead. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he comfort you in these times of darkness. May he laugh and walk with you in days of joy and happiness. And until we gather again in person to wish each other well, may we remember God's love for us and be thankful. Amen.